Welcome to a presentation from the Nevada Department of Education. Thank you for joining us. With the onset of the coronavirus, teaching and learning in the traditional classroom has come to a halt. Today, schools across the nation and throughout the world have transitioned to remote learning. The Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative is glad to bring you the COVID-19 series of webinars, which will share valuable insights and tips for teaching and learning from afar. We are excited that you've decided to join us today. The Nevada Department of Education is committed to making the transition to remote learning as seamless as possible so that there are minimal breaks in your students' learning path. The Department of Education places Nevada students at the center of every decision they make. They are truly committed to seeing that all students succeed. Today's topic is Transitioning to Remote Learning for Administrators, featuring Kim Loomis. Welcome, I'm Kim Loomis. I've worked in the field of digital learning since 1999. I spent 10 years in the classroom as a high school mathematics teacher. Later, I held positions in school leadership and central office administration. I retired last summer as the director of online and blended learning in Nevada's Clark County School District, where I provided leadership in the growth of digital learning in the K-12 setting. I have over 20 years in the online and blended school setting from teaching, designing digital content, professional development, and virtual school administration, to managing systems and processes for growing classrooms of the future. Today, on behalf of the Nevada Department of Education, I will be presenting Transitioning to Remote Learning for Administrators. Let's dive into today's agenda. Today, we're going to consider areas or decisions that leadership teams are making during transition to remote learning. Specifically, we'll discuss capitalizing on current technology you already have. We'll discuss identifying tools for learning and communication. And we'll touch upon some tips for preparing students, teachers, and parents for digital learning experience. We are glad you've joined us as we share some of the considerations you can take when trying to offer some remote learning opportunities for your students during this time. Let's get started. As the former online and blended learning director, you know I'm a huge fan of digital learning, but I never expected a world quite like the one that we've been pushed into today. In these trying times, we are in triage mode. Emergency remote learning will not be ideal. We'll need to be creative and flexible. We must remember that all stakeholders, teachers, administrators, students, and parents are learning new skills and pedagogy. Please be patient with yourself and those around you. Also, it's important that we remember to focus on the core business of schools, relationships, and learning. Even with the addition of technology as a tool for learning, we should never take the heart of the classroom teacher out of the learning process. I don't know about you. I was just saying with my family a little while ago, that the last couple of weeks felt like a year. Things are rapidly changing and a heavy cloud of uncertainty hangs over all of us. As administrators or leaders in your programs, you've always had to make some major decisions. Like, how are you gonna to continue to serve students? Now, these decisions aren't made lightly, but one thing is certain. All decisions are made with the thought of students first. As you venture to find a path for remote learning during the remainder of the school year, continue to hold that commitment to students. Ask yourself, how can we get them back to learning during these uncertain times? Our hope is that today's session will help you build a framework for some next steps so you can consider different options for how to continue to serve your students. Now this session, just full disclosure here, is not intended to be a step-by-step -step instructions or a type of a blueprint to follow in order to implement remote learning programs. That's because honestly, no such thing exists. There is no one size fits all solution. Every school has unique students, a different set of resources available to them and their own lens in which to plan to implement remote learning. You will need to rely on creativity and flexibility to try things out, see what works. Definitely be prepared to pivot or tweak along the way. Then just go out and try it and try again. 
The good thing is this transition and change is new for all people involved, for students, for parents and teachers. No one is expecting this to go off without a hitch and there will be hiccups along the way. What you want to do is paint for you some key concepts that you should be looking at and considering to mitigate some of those bumps that you're going to encounter while you make this transition to digital learning environments. So let's start with a tip that may seem obvious, but it's, it's worth a reminder because it's gonna save you a lot of time and also ease the stress of your stakeholders. That is to capitalize on technologies that you're already using. You possibly already have some software products you may be using in your building. These same software products can go home with your students. Teachers can continue to monitor their progress from their teacher dashboards from a distance. Also, you have teachers check to see if they've got print textbooks that are currently using maybe an online component. Many publishers have their text available along with interactive components and assessments online. And the familiarity of these resources will help reduce teacher and student cognitive load. The goal is not to overwhelm your students, your teachers, or your parents right now by introducing lots of new technology to them. Go ahead and maximize the systems that your teachers and students are already comfortable with so that you're able to overcome this disruption a lot quicker. One thing you want to consider early on is finding out if students have access to technology at home. Now this can be done through an email survey to families, create an online survey that you can send out via email or even via text. But you may ask, what about those families that don't have an email address on file? consider posting a link on your school's website. If your district has a robocalling system that you already have in place to connect with families, go ahead and send out that message, asking them to visit the site on your school website, or even just to call the school and notify you what their status is to technology access. Do they need a computer? Do they have Wi-Fi? Then you'll want to consider how you can distribute technology to students and families ensuring that all students have the ability to learn remotely. Also, consider tracking and management of devices. You most certainly already have a library or a textbook checkout system at your school. Use those same systems to check out devices. Another thing to do is to identify a platform that teachers can work, load work on for their students and that students can access remotely. You may already have teachers doing this right now. Maybe your staff is using Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or another online forum to communicate and distribute assignments and work to their students. Others may be using a learning management system or LMS like Canvas or Schoology or an open application like Seesaw. These are some of the fastest way to get content to your students. So ask your staff what they're using. Try to identify a single platform that can be used school-wide. This is especially important for those that may not have an online presence already, so that they can lean on others for guidance and support. Having a single platform will also help reduce or ease the cognitive load on staff, students, and families in these already high-stress times. You may consider having a staff share and train others on how to use their platform in their classes. It could be simply asking them to record a short video of what it looks like and how they use it, or have them hop on a virtual conference room with their fellow peers and have them walk through their setup and processes. You want to start building that collaboration spirit with teachers early, and they are really going to appreciate it and thank you for it. Consider even having them team up and gather or create resources together or share resources they already have so that they don't feel like they're having to recreate the wheel. The transition to remote learning is going to be a team effort. So ease your staff's stress by facilitating this idea of teaming and collaboration. Another thought as well is that you can skip all this together. Just start slowly. Make it very, very simple. 
have teachers work off a shareable Google or Microsoft Teams document where they go in and update it weekly or daily with links to contents for students to access and activities for them to work on. Maybe the students just email the activities to the teacher when they're completed. The point is we want to get students back to learning. So it's okay to start small, then build from there. This is also the time to think about what support you can give and provide families without access to technology. What if they only have a mobile phone or maybe no Wi-Fi at home? This could mean providing print materials that are available for pickup at school during the week. Students can take pictures of the completed work and send it to their teachers via phones. Be sure that you are considering that the content can be created and made available to provide learning opportunities for all. Next, keep parents in the loop. So if parents are used to logging into a student information system or SIS, like Infinite Campus, to check on student progress, go ahead and continue utilizing that platform. Investigate if there are any additional features that may be available to help support families during this time. Many of the SIS and LMS companies are posting resources on their website for how to support schools and family through this COVID-19 crisis. You may want to look and see what is available directly from them. There are other programs like Remind. It's a web-based program and application that helps facilitate communication between schools, teachers, and families. Also, use social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. These forums allow schools to easily share out resources and even broadcast real-time updates. Whatever method or platform you're currently using, continue to do so. Just ramp up the efforts to ensure that parents are kept in the loop throughout. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have been in the field of online and blended learning for over 20 years now. And during that time, we've made plenty of mistakes. And fortunately, we've learned from them. Today, I get to work with schools across the country to find ways to make online and blended learning meet the needs of their students and programs. It is through these experiences that I have found some organizational standards that are super important to have in place in order for a smooth transition to remote learning. One of them is all about communication. How will students communicate with their teachers? Will they use email or phone or via live virtual conferencing software or a combination of these? Let's dive a little bit deeper into what these can look like. Teachers are going to remain that main point of contact for providing student support. So plan on how is that going to look? Which platforms will they use? Teachers should make themselves available through a variety of platforms. Google Voice is an app, a web-based program, that will issue a phone number teachers can give out to students in order to call or text through. It allows teachers to protect their own personal phone numbers, so they are not giving those out. But they are able to have a contact number that is dedicated to providing student support. Another way students and teachers can connect is through virtual conferencing platforms like Zoom, Skype, or Google Hangouts. This is a great way for students to connect with their teachers, whether it is one-on-one, -on -one, small or large group sessions. Students definitely like to have these types of engagement with their teachers and their peers. Seeing and hearing familiar faces and voices in these times of social distancing is much needed. No matter the method selected, the important thing is to just connect with students and prevent that feeling of isolation. Let them know that they're not alone. Think about what opportunities students have to connect, whether it's via email, phone, text, or virtual conferencing. Next, students and teachers are used to having routines and schedule to follow each day. One thing you want to determine when designing an online framework for learning is scheduling. Not only for students, but for teachers as well. 
For many, this is going to be the first time they're working from home. So share with them up front what a typical day is going to look like for them. For students, share how many hours a day they are expected to work on their schoolwork. What will that time look like? Accessing online content, offline activities, virtual interactions with their teachers and peers, or a mix? Help students understand that this is not summer vacation and that schoolwork is important to their continued success. For teachers, when do they need to be available to support their students? And what will that look like? Will it be on phone? Or will they be hosting office hours throughout the week? Or leading live sessions at specific times? Or a mix? Be clear about your expectations. Also, think outside the box and don't be afraid to let your teachers break the mold of their typical brick and mortar schedule. Consider balancing the school day with some non-screen activities as well. Teachers can incorporate activities that allow students to really explore areas of interest. Let them do some research on something that they want to know more about, then have them share out in a live virtual discussion session. Or perhaps you simply include some time for what I like to call mindfulness, where students are encouraged to engage in activities away from the computer, like yoga or exercise or pursuing other hobbies. Just be sure that you make it clear for your students and teachers what their typical day and week will look like. Now, as an organization, we know that communication is paramount when it comes to online learning. When students have a question or need help from their teachers, they are used to simply just raising their hands and waiting for the teacher to call on them or come over to help. But in an online learning environment, it looks completely different because the teacher's not in front of them. Students will need to call, text, or email their teacher to let them know that they need help. Just like we train them to raise their hands to ask for help in our classes, we're going to need to train them on how to reach out and get in touch when they need assistance. With that being said, as a school leader, you need to set some guidelines for teachers about returning communication. As a former administrator at an online school, let me share a few we had. Student phone calls, emails, and texts were expected to be returned within 24 hours to ensure students' needs were being met quickly before learning helplessness kicked in. When it came to grading or grading feedback, we ask teachers to return that feedback within 48 hours of submission. Why did we implement these types of expectations? Well, we want students to get the answers and the support that they need in a timely fashion so that they can keep moving forward. We don't want students having to wait on teachers to continue their learning process. So how do you set up your students for success? Let's take some time to visit some things that you can plan for ahead of time to get students ready to dive into the world of online learning. Now you want to be proactive and have plans in place for how students will get support. Consider getting some resources ready ahead of time to address common questions that online teachers typically field as seen here on the slide. Maybe even plan to host an online welcome session for families using a virtual conferencing tool. Ask teachers to hold a class orientation for their students. Consider a phone number for tech support because your students will have trouble logging in and they'll need some place to go to get help. Create short videos or have step-by-step -step written instructions to help students understand how to find their schoolwork and how to submit assignments remotely. Share a schedule ahead of time so students know what work expectations are for each day or week. Consider making a sample schedule available to students to help them pace themselves. Keep in mind adding in breaks alongside AM and PM academic times. Consider the age and attention span when drafting this sample schedule 
to share with families. A good rule of thumb for focused attention is two to three times the age of the child. Most elementary students can give you about one to two hours a day. Middle school, two to three hours per day, and high school, about three to four hours per day. So help your teachers plan accordingly. And secondary leaders, help your staff with staggered schedules as not to overwhelm students and families with six or more teachers expecting instructional time each and every day. I mentioned earlier that we have to teach students how to ask for help, and we really do. So maybe have a video or host a live session showing students how to leave a voice message for their teacher or how to send an email or text to them. We often expect students to already know how to do these things, but they really don't. Calling a teacher in the traditional classroom didn't need technology. It was really easy. Sto students don't know how to reach out to their teachers from a distance. So essentially, what we're saying here is that prior proper planning is going to help alleviate a lot of anxiety and confusion that can arise from students when they're transitioning to this new learning environment. Next, let's focus on preparing teachers. Your teachers are important stakeholders because they are on the front lines and are often the first point of contact for fielding student and parent questions. So as administrators and leaders, how can you support and prepare them? Your teachers, if they haven't already, are going to come to you armed with plenty of questions, similar to the ones listed here. Like, how is any of this supposed to work? And what will I be expected to teach? For these questions, consider picking a focus for your teachers. Is this going to be a time for them to provide reinforcement and review previously learned concepts and skills? Or are teachers expected to pick up where they left off and continue teaching the standards that had yet to be covered in their course? Personally, I'm a fan of continued learning, continuing to meet expected standards and benchmarks for the year, thus reducing the learning gaps for the coming school year. By partnering with digital content and focusing on essential standards, we can continue to learn new material. The next question teachers may ask is, how will I communicate with students? Now, once you've decided what learning will look like, and set communication expectations. Give teachers time to practice using the selected communication tools ahead of time, even with each other. You can schedule meetings and virtual conference spaces and have teachers practice playing around with available features. Even showcase some of the features that they found out or learned. You'll want to help them get familiar with it. Consider hosting weekly staff meetings in the same communication tools. Next, how do I even begin to create an online lesson? Now, this one is a really complex question to field, but as we recommend, this is new to you and to them. So start simple. There are so many ways to approach and deliver online learning, but when teachers are in a crunch, and they have to get digital content available to students quickly, like this emergency remote learning, we recommend just asking them to focus in on the essential or power standards. You know, the big ideas and key concepts. As noted earlier, you may already have software that your students are familiar with. Start there. Also, there are a lot of open educational resources, OER material, that is immediately ready for student consumption. Things like Khan Academy, CK12, or OER Commons have ready-made resources available. I'm a big fan of partnering with digital content, be it a purchased product or an OER. This digital partnership helps teachers to personalize the learning space. Some teachers may want to be creative, so let them develop their own content. One easy way to do that is having them create their own short instructional videos, 
either live or pre-recorded. The key is to keep lessons simple. They should be somewhat similar to the routines found in the classroom. For example, an online lesson structure might involve an opening. Use this time for students to see and hear their teachers, a short pre-recorded video, or a live session to welcome students to today's objectives and provide a to-do or checklist. This is a great way to maintain that human touch and relationships. When it comes to introduction of new material, there are three different possible ways to deliver content. A teacher could lecture, live or pre-recorded. They could rely on a textbook. Remember the online resources that may be available. Or they could partner with digital assets like OERs. Ideally, the more engaging the presentation of new content with varied modalities, this should increase a student's desire to come to a class and gain new knowledge. But just asking the students to consume content, like watching a video or reading an article, is only the first step in learning. Activities must be planned that allow students to engage with the new content. Students need to practice and fine tune their skills with new knowledge gained. Most software and tech sites will come with practice, like Khan Academy or IXL. Also check out Quizlet or Kahoot for previously made practices. Or teachers can create their own online worksheets. And if the if students have textbooks at home, practice problems are readily available. To check for understanding, end every lesson with a short five to ten question quiz. It's okay to use questions from the practice material, like asking students to provide answers to problems three, six, and nine on a practice sheet or from a textbook. You can use an online form or another auto-graded technology that makes it simple to embed formative assessments and provide immediate feedback to students. Consider allowing multiple attempts for mastery purposes. Some digital content partners will have individual student data available to help inform instruction on a teacher's dashboard. These end of lesson assessments are also a way to record student participation and attendance. Elective teachers may ask students to submit video files of them playing instruments, singing, cooking, or other physical activities. An English teacher may ask for an audio file of students reading or debating. Have your staff check out the previous COVID-19 webinar from Nevada Department of Education titled Lesson Planning with Balance in Mind. Finally, let's focus on preparing parents and guardians. Online learning will need to be explained and introduced to them as well. Since parents are the ones that have face-to-face -face contact with students, they are the eyes and ears at home. So we rely on them to provide reminders to students about schoolwork and expectations, or how to get help when they see that their child is struggling. It is important to clue them in early on on how things are going to work so that everyone is on the same page. A popular way some online teachers like to do this is hosting virtual open houses or welcome sessions. So just like you did at the beginning of the school year in your physical building, teachers can host a 15 to 30 minute online session where you get to show parents and how students will participate in the online environment. It could be sort of a day in the life and then explain to them how students can get support along the way. Use that time to introduce the online learning schedule to them as well. Be prepared to address questions with regards to access or lack thereof to technology, or even how IEP accommodations will be addressed. For younger learners who are going to require a heavy parent or learning coach involvement, explain what exactly that will look like. Have a plan for what will happen if students are not logging in or not completing their online work, and how that will be communicated with parents. Finally, we said at the beginning to keep parents in the loop. 
share with parents when and how they're going to receive progress updates. How often will your teachers contact parents with updates? Figure out what works best for your situation and your families. One last thought I wanna leave you with. As leaders, when you are tasked with managing some major changes like this, I like to think of the focus being management of the ripple effect. So when we toss a pebble into a pond, ripples appear. Change is very similar in that it creates ripples and they could stretch out in ever widening circles. This is why your vision and leadership are important to establishing a focus on learning and keeping students first. Now, in order to make change feel more like a ripple, instead of a tsunami wave crashing down on us, we have some things for you to take into consideration. Remember, everyone needs to be on the same page. This will require clear and concise communication throughout this process, along with necessary layers of support for all stakeholders, your students, your parents, your staff. I strongly encourage you to identify champions who are going to be on your team that can rally the troops. Don't be afraid to lean on them. For example, I mentioned earlier, those teachers that were already practicing some of the technology, consider these staff members your lead teachers in this time and see how you can pull them in to provide support to other colleagues to get them up to speed. Don't forget to celebrate and share your successes and failures. Maybe you want to organize weekly debrief meetings. These can be in content or grade level focus to really share what's worked and what hasn't. Allow yourself and your staff to take risks. Remember, fail, F-A-I-L, is just first attempt in learning. Reflect and try again. Take the opportunity to have teachers collaborate and like I mentioned earlier, share resources so that everybody doesn't feel like they're reinventing the wheel. As we transition to remote learning, we must remember that all stakeholders, teachers, administrators, students, and parents are learning new skills and pedagogy. So please be patient with yourself and those around you. Also, it's important that we remember to focus on the core business of schools, relationships and learning. Even the addition of digital content and technology as a tool for learning, we should never, ever take the heart of the classroom teacher out of the learning process. In the end, we're all in this together with one focus, and that is, our students first. Thank you for your time today. Your professional growth is truly important to us. We appreciate you joining us as we learn and grow together. It has been a pleasure serving you. Before we conclude our session, I want you to know that you can visit the Nevada Department of Education YouTube site to play back this and other webinars. Thank you for joining us today.